All right, algebra students, we are going to do one more transformation with graphs. So I'm going to kind of walk you through some of these problems on the new um, worksheet that you're going to be working on today called stretching and shrinking graphs. So recall we have translated graphs right and left and up and down. So I add a minus three and that would be down, right? on the outside of the absolute value. If I put a minus three on the inside of the absolute value, that's going to be right three. If I put a plus three on the inside, that's going to be left three. If I put a plus three on the outside, that's going to be up three. We've done all of those things. We've done up and down, left and right, which is all about adding and subtracting. We've also done some reflecting. If I put a negative in front of there, it's going to flip it upside down, right? If I put a negative on the inside, well, actually, let's change this for a second. Let's go, let's do a plus one, so let's move it left one. Now, if I put a negative on the inside, it's going to reflect it sideways. It's going to reflect it across the y-axis, right? So a negative on the inside reflects it sideways. A negative on the outside flips it up and down. So we've done some reflecting. We've done some which is up and down, left and, uh, which is, uh, sorry, flipping up and down, left and right. We've done some translating, which is sliding up and down, left and right. But now we're going to do some stretching and shrinking. So this is going to be a little bit different. So let's just start with our regular old absolute value. So we're going to start here. Now take out your worksheet because all of the equations I have on here are the same equations that are going to be um, in numbers 1 through 10 on your worksheet so you can kind of go through it as I go through it. So we have our basic absolute value which is that V shape, right? Now on your worksheet it says complete the ordered pair, one comma what? So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to find one, one is right here, right? Zero, here's two, so one is in the middle. I want to find the ordered pair that goes with when the, the y value that goes with when x is 1. So when x is 1, y is, and you're going to go ahead and fill that out, y is also 1. So your ordered pair is 1, 1. And that makes sense because if I go make this a y equals, so when if I plug in a 1 for x, well, what is y? y equals the absolute value of 1, well, y is also 1. So my ordered pair is 1, 1. Now I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to make all these y equals to make it an entire an, an entire equation. So this one's going to be a little bit different. So notice I'm not adding or subtracting anything this time, and I don't have any negatives. What I'm doing is I'm multiplying. So I'm multiplying my absolute value graph by a whole number, by something that is greater than 1. Okay, I'm multiplying by a 3. Again, note this is something that is greater than 1. So when I multiply by a value that is greater than 1, notice what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that graph. So that blue graph, what would you say is happening to that blue graph? Does it look wider? Does it look narrower? You could, you could say, does it look shorter? Does it look taller? I would say it looks narrower. That, that's the word I would use. It looks like I've taken that red one and I've kind of, I, I've pushed it together. I've made it narrower, All right? Just a quick note. Why does that make sense that it would get narrower? Well, let's plug in a one again. If X is one, what is Y? So I plug in a one right here. Well, if x is 1, y is 3 times the absolute value of 1, or y is 3. So when x is 1, y is 3. Notice in this first one, when x was 1, y was 1. But in this one, when x is 1, y is all the way up to 3 already. In other words, it's rising very quickly. So when I multiply that by something that is greater than 1, it's rising quickly or its slope is becoming steeper. So that's going to make it narrower. So if that makes it narrower, and I'm going to leave that graph up there, what do you think is going to make it wider? Well, what happens when I multiply by something that is less than 1? So this one, I multiplied it by 1 third. When I multiply it by 1 third or something that is less than 1, it's not rising as quickly, right? In other words, my slope is kind of flattening out. So that's going to make it wider, right? 
So there's our absolute value. Quick review, multiply by something that is greater than one, it's gonna get narrower or taller. Multiply by something that is less than one, it's gonna make it shorter or wider. Right now let's look at, let's take those off there. Let's look at our parabola. So there's our absolute value, but let's look at our parabola and what happens. So, so here's my first one. Now note there's a negative here. So it's gonna flip it upside down, right? So what happens though, consider this one. So, so remember this one, this made it what? This made it narrower, right? So this one, what do you think is gonna happen? Again, I'm multiplying by something that is, if I just look at this piece, right? Not the negative, but just this piece, I'm multiplying by something that is greater than one. So this again should make it narrower, right? Take a look at that black graph. That's gonna make it narrower. I'm gonna zoom out, whoops, a little too much. All right, there we go. So again, that made it narrower because I multiplied by something that is greater than one. Outside of that negative, I multiplied by something that's greater than one. So now again, think about that first one. If I multiply by something that is ignoring the negative, multiply by something that is less than one, that should make it, just like in the absolute value graph, that should make it wider, right? Wider or you might say shorter. And sort of for the same reason, right? When I multiply by something that is greater than one, what's happening is that that graph is rising. Sorry, let's put all these back up here. That graph is rising more quickly, right? So if I multiply my x by four, I'm gonna get a very high or a very, a very steep y value. But if I multiply by something that is less than one, if I just take one fourth of x, it's not gonna rise as steeply, right? It's gonna rise very slowly. So again, this is gonna make it rise more quickly, right? Greater than one will make it rise more quickly and less than one is gonna make it rise more slowly. So hopefully that'll give you a good start on your worksheet and you'll be able to do the rest.